Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Thank Hi. you so much for watching. We are so excited about all the attention it's getting. Um, today we have this beautiful Black Angus beef from Mullaney Black Angus Beef Farms. They have been so generous. Um, they're all about top to tail, using the whole beef, the whole cut. So, you know, we thought we'd utilize some different cuts. Um, they actually sent me a whole rib rack. I've just portioned it up into some steaks here. What'd they send you, teens? I have opted to do some beef cheeks today. Oh, so not yeah. a commonly used piece of meat, but I just want to show people have prepared correctly. It's so incredibly lean, but also tender at the same time. So it's just a really prime cut. I'm doing quite a classic dish today. So it's just going to be beef cheeks and red wine. It's going to go in the oven, slow cook for four and a half hours. So I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to do steak fritz. I'm going to show you guys how to get the perfect medium rare steak. It's one of my signatures. So on the pan, into the oven, finish. Um, I'm going to do some potatoes in the deep fryer and a Bernay sauce to go with it. All right, well, let's go. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> I like to take my steak out of the fridge about 30 minutes before I'm going to cook it um, just to get it to room temperature so it cooks really evenly throughout the middle. I find um, it really tenderizes the meat as well, does. getting it to room temperature. It just relaxes the muscles and yeah. the beef, doesn't it? So I've got these beautiful white potatoes. I'm going to cut them into fritz. What I've already done with the beef cheeks, I've just cut off any excess fat or sinew on them. So that just makes them a little bit leaner and it just prepares them for a better cook. Steak fruits is just a fancy name for steak and fries. So I actually picked up this technique working at a French restaurant, um, Montreché, one of my favourites. They actually par cook their potatoes just in boiling water and then it's ready to go into that second cook in the deep fryer. You just want to leave that for about an hour or so, just until the water comes down. So these beef cheeks just have a classic base to them. So that's your carrot, your celery, your garlic, and your onion. A mirepoix. I know it's a mirepoix. <laughs> I just can't say it. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> So we've trimmed all of that unwanted fat and sinew from the beef cheeks. I've drizzled it in olive oil. They're at room temperature, seasoned them in salt. Now I'm just gonna sear them off on the hot pan before they go in the oven. Yum. Well, I'm gonna make my Bernay sauce. Um, pretty simple, it's basically like a hollandaise. I've got my white wine, tarragon, uh, peppercorn, and vinegar reduction here. Two egg yolks, about 250 grams of butter, tarragon through it, and you've got a creamy Bernays sauce, which is my favorite for steak. Um, so I'm just gonna get cracking on that while you get cracking on your beef cheeks. I'm just gonna go in with all this butter here. I'm just gonna get these beef cheeks on and searing. At the same time as the beef cheek searing, I'm just gonna pop all of this into my cast iron pan. I like to use a classic rosemary and thyme with my beef cheeks. They just combine perfectly with the red wine sauce. Just getting to the thickness that you want now. Basically, this is a hollandaise made with the white wine and vinegar reduction, but I put tarragon in there as well. And then to make it into the Bernays, um, we just put some fresh chopped tarragon through this sauce. Instantly a Bernays. I love how Mulaney Black Angus uses the whole product. I think it's... It's amazing. So you buy like a quarter of a cow or half yeah. a cow and then... Yeah, that's what we're trying to do is just show how to use different cuts because it's a bit exciting though, not knowing what <laughs> parts you're going to get and then you experiment in the kitchen rather than just cooking a, it is, I a fill bit, it every time. A bit like a mystery box, isn't a it? mystery box. 
Beautiful little family business on the Sunshine Coast and it's always good to support local. So what are you up to next? Well, now I'm just sort of a waiting game. I'm going to get that pan nice and hot um, and I'm going to get the beef onto it. I might season my beef. I always like to take it out of the oven at about 48 degrees and it rises up to about 52 degrees. Yeah. Um, and I find that that is just the perfect way to have beef. Um, these root fillets are just incredible. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and season them now. You wanna season them really generously and both sides. And you wanna make sure you get it on the sides as well. You really wanna get as much salt on so you just get that crust. I'm just gonna deglaze the pan with about 500 mils of red wine. I'm going to reduce that red wine by about half and then I'm going to add one litre of beef stock. Alrighty, so my pan is super hot. I'm going to go in with a fair bit of olive oil onto the pan. I like to do two minutes on each side, twice, for these super thick steaks and then into the oven for about five to ten. I always use a thermometer probe just to see how the steak's tracking. Um, you never really know, but two minutes, check with the thermometer, 48, 49 degrees, you're laughing. So I've just got that red wine reduced by about half, and I'm going to add the seared beef cheeks into the pot now. This dish is actually a bit of a one pot wonder. You can put it in the oven and just forget about it. I'm going to put a litre of beef stock, or just until it covers the beef cheeks. About time here. Oh, here we go. My time is going off. Two minutes. I'm gonna flip that over. Do this thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> My brother used to do it to me as a child. For the second turn, and I'm gonna. Sorry. Uh, I'm gonna put my timer on again for another two, and then another two. So this has been brought up to heat now. Yum. So you need a um, cast iron pot to do this. A little trick of mine is to put alfoil on the top, despite the fact that we're gonna use a lid. It just kind of seals that heat in a lot better, oh. and just allows less air to escape. And that's your meal done for the entire family. You literally need to put that in the oven for about three and a half hours. Then I like to take the lid off yep. and leave it uncovered for another hour just to reduce that sauce down. Yum. Today I'm gonna serve them up on just some sweet potato mash. I'm gonna pop my steaks in the oven in about two right minutes. And I'm gonna get started on my fries. And then I reckon we can plate up pretty soon. Oh, oh, the timer. oh. Stop. <laughs> I need to flip the steak. Oh, look at that colour. That looks so good. That's a good pan. Drain these off. So the hot water just par cooks these chippies. And then we'll just dry them off and get them into the fryer. And what temperature do you have the oil to? Well, because these are already par cooked, yeah. I have it at about 180 degrees. Okay. Um, I think that's probably the best frying temperature for chips. It gets them nice and crispy and they don't need too long. Just keep an eye on them until they're nice and golden. Yeah. Steaks have been seared four minutes on each side. I'm gonna just take them out. And this is trick number two. Ooh. Ooh. I use a baking rack over a tray yeah. just so the air circulates through and it doesn't cook more on one side than the other. That's because the if you just have it in your pan straight into the oven, it's going to cook more on the underneath side yeah. because that heat's coming up from the bottom of the pan. So I'm just going to probe that for Tem. I reckon they'll need a couple of minutes on Not long at all. Not long. I'm just going to put these in the oven. They won't need too long. All right, so I'm gonna take these steaks out of the oven now. Yum. Yum. We want the temperature to get up to about 54. About that, yeah. And what kind of steak will that cook us? That medium give rare? give us a medium rare, yeah. a good medium rare. I'm just gonna let them rest here for about five minutes. It's really important to let your steak rest. It's just as important as the cooking process. Yeah. 
Um, I would say about half the amount of time uh, to let your steak rest that you did to cook it. You've got an easy job, you've just got a one pot I know. one pot. I know, all these bloody elements. I wish, wish I got that memo. All right, so I'm just going to... Oh. Oh. Just be careful. So just don't throw your chips yeah. from up here. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, place them in. About five minutes. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, a bit of a tarragon salt. Um, so when I toss the chippies through salt, the tarragon through salt. Just about done. Yes, that is just blushing. You have definitely done that beautiful black Mulaney <laughs> Angus beef justice. <laughs> Get our chips on, nice and crunchy. And just get the bernays just frizzled on. And go over with our tarragon sole and just sort of, you can never really have too much salt and steak. Yeah, just gonna get these beautiful beef cheeks out of the oven. You know when your beef cheeks are done properly because you can grab two forks and you can literally oh. just shred them apart. Oh my god. So I'm just going to serve these on some sweet potato Oh my mash. god, that looks insane. And the smell in here is so good. That red wine sauce is just Yum. delicious. You can get some of the vegetables on there. That on a winter's night. Oh, oh my god. Delish. Just to make it pretty. A little bit of thyme on top. This is my <laughs> steak fritz using the Milani beef black angus. So classic, so delicious. Beautiful. Uh, this is my beef cheeks and a red wine sauce, slow cooked with a sweet potato mash. Yum. Yum. Shall we tuck in? Let's tuck I in. I am actually wanting to try some. Can I have a chip? Yes. 